I can also divide by U infinity and this two also can cancel and we end up with this equation 1 over pi integral well if this is uh, this was from 0 to C but now the integral over 5 so 0 x means 5 Cx means 0 it's the other way around and this negative will make me just flip so I have a naught a n sine n phi sine phi d phi over cosine phi minus cosine phi prime equal to alpha minus dy by dx we need to evaluate these integrals so it's not an it's not it's not an integral equation anymore because I will evaluate this integral right away just reminding you there is a, an, uh, an interesting formula here um, what's that formula? it's 1 over pi integral from 0 to pi cosine n pi prime d phi prime divided by cosine phi minus cosine phi prime this is simply negative sine n phi divided by sine phi and because of the following because sine a sine b is one half cosine difference minus cosine the addition you can write this as 1 over pi sine n phi sine phi over the same denominator as actually cosine n phi only. So these are, I mean, uh, famous integrals that we typically use in linear volume. So you can you can see here that this integral is immediately here, right? Sine n phi sine phi. This last one, sine n phi sine phi over the difference of cosine. This is gives you cosine n phi. So I have summation a n cosine n phi. That's it. This is very easy, and you can check that the first term will give you a note actually. This is an exercise, so just check this. It's nothing new. You're exactly using this integral. This is equal what? Alpha minus dy by dx. I will rewrite this as the following. I will rewrite this equation. This is the result equation. I will rewrite it as the following. dy by dx. It's a function of x. This is your Kemper's law. Okay? It's a function of x. So you can write it as a function of y by the substitution that we have. This is equal to alpha minus a naught free term minus summation a n cosine n of r. So if you manage you to write your y as when written as function of phi as a summation of cosines, then here are the coefficients directly. Remember, we're in the, we are in the analysis problem. In the analysis problem, I'm already giving the shape of my camber, so I'm giving this guy. So please write it in terms of phi instead of x. This is very easy. And then if you write it in terms of phi, hopefully it's summation of cosines. If it's obvious that it's summation of cosines, cosine of phi. Cosine of phi, cosine of phi, cosine of three phi. Okay? If it's summation of cosines, then here is the coefficients immediately. But if it's not function, if it's not obviously as a series of cosines, can we get these coefficients? Any suggestion? Yep, exactly. What's this? What is 
you have a function here, I ignore anything. I have a function of phi, whatever, phi, x, t, function form variable, right? I can always write it as, if it's an even function, I can always write it as summation of cosines. This is Fourier cosine series, right? Any function over a period, you can write it as summation of sines and cosines. If it's an even function, you can write it as summation of cosines only. So now, I write it as summation of cosines, and what are the coefficients? So this is, this is the free term in your cosine series. How do you get it? So alpha minus a naught, well, I get it as follows. Integration over the period, your function, integrated, simply. And any of these terms, so negative a n is the integral over the period, your function multiplied by cosine n phi d phi. And we have here 2 over 5. Okay, so we're done. We're done in the following sense. I'm giving the shape of the camber y. Differentiate with respect to x, replace x in terms of phi, evaluate these integrals. This one gives you a naught immediately. Multiply by cosine n phi, integrate to get the a n coefficients. Hopefully they will terminate after a while. Okay. So if you do that and you get the coefficients, I have the gamma. Let's get the lift out of that. Let's get the lift. So the lift was two the total gamma divided by u infinity c. So it's 2 over u infinity c integral. I'll substitute for my gamma, which if you remember was 2u infinity a naught tan phi over 2 plus summation a n sine n phi. And the dx. As usual, it's negative c over 2 sine phi d phi. So uh, you can carry out the integrations fine. I'll tell you here. So these ones are aside. I'll give another couple. If you want to do this yourself. And you've probably seen it many, many times. It's the integral from 0 to pi cosine m of phi cosine n of phi d phi. This is 0 of m is different from n and pi over 2 if it's m equal to n. And uh, the same for sines also. So you can put cosines or sines. So if you do that, you'll find that Cl is 2 pi a0 plus a1 over 2. Interestingly, the left coefficient depends only on the first two coefficients. The left is only dependent on the first two coefficients. I don't care about the rest of the series. If you want the left, just get me the first two coefficients. And the moment cm is, by definition, integral from 0 to c, your pressure, this is the definition of the moment, right? your pressure times x in negative dx and we normalize by c squared. So this is what? This is negative pi over 2 a0 plus a1 plus a2 over 2. So the moment depends only on the first two three coefficients. So uh, for lift and moment purposes, you just need the first three coefficients. I put a couple of problems for you in the homework that are interesting. The SSX series one and another special type of airfoil. Tell you how flying wing designers do it. So, uh, tell you something. so now I have this uh, group 
this, this, what do you call it? Force amount, what do you call it? Anyway, so I have CL 